Hi friends, I have a digital organizing challenge available for you now where you can overhaul your email. You can actually get your email inbox numbers down to zero. So be sure to grab my digital organizing challenge from my freebie library now. We're overhauling our computers, our phones, our pictures, and our videos. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I organize my email and how I get through about 150 to 300 emails per day. You are going to find tips that are extremely useful for work and for personal use. So one of the most overwhelming things about our emails can be the sheer quantity of them. So if you have a large number of emails sitting in your inbox right now, we need to get that number down because whenever you open your inbox and see that number, it immediately is probably causing you stress. So in one week, if you use my digital organizing challenge, you'll be able to overhaul your email and get that number down to a reasonable amount at least, if not zero. So right now, what I'm going to show you are all my tips so that you can maintain your email moving forward after you complete the challenge. And then your email inbox will not be overflowing ever again. So let's start with how I actually set up my inbox. So when I tell you I hated the setup in the past, I hated it. I fought using this setup. My friend that I worked with told me to set my inbox to conversation mode and I hated it because to me it just looked jumbled. I couldn't tell who was replying to whom and when but that was because they didn't have their email set to conversation mode so they were replying to old emails. But what happens is when you set your email to conversation mode you have everything in one thread you just scroll down to the very last email to see the latest communication and then everything makes sense. So you're not wasting your time answering old communication on a single subject. So that's why I love conversation mode now. It saves me time. The second part of the way I set up my email is what I have displayed at the top. So what I have displayed at the top are only unread emails. I mean, it seems straightforward, but it just makes it easier to see what you have unread so that you're not having to sift through what was already read to discern what you need to take action on. Now let's get into the process of how I actually get through hundreds of emails per day. So the very first thing I do once I open my email is I mark as read all the emails I do not need to take action on, any kind of action. There's usually some kind of email confirming something. And then what I do is for work emails, I mark them as read, but for personal emails, I will delete them if it's something I can access later, like a bill, or a statement or anywhere that I can log in and find the exact same information. I'll delete it if it's personal. But for business, because we need to just have everything on record and searchable, then I will just mark it as read. So what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll click whatever checkbox, depending on what um, email system you use. I click the checkbox next to everything I know is something I don't need to take action on and it's just simply a confirmation. I mark all the checkboxes and then I click mark as read and then the quantity goes down super quick helps get me into work mode. I feel like I have a lot less on my plate because I've reduced that quantity of emails. And this next tip is super important. You must get in the habit of checking your junk and spam folders at least once per day. That way you will never miss an important email. I typically remember to do this after I've done the bulk marking as read or deleting of like the regular non-action emails. You might want to do this first if that makes sense to you like habit-wise. You'll either have to set up some kind of calendar reminder or some kind of reminder somewhere that tells you to check your junk and spam folders once per day. And then once it's a habit, it's a habit and you won't need those reminders anymore. You'll just find yourself doing it automatically. The next thing I will do to reduce the quantity of emails is to take care of the emails that do require me to take action but don't require me to respond to anyone. I'm an introvert so I always avoid talking to people. So the emails you need to take action on that you don't need to respond to can look different for you, but for me it, it, it'll be something like entering invoices or, or payments or reconciling things. And for you it may be paying a bill, entering a bill into your budget, completing something through a link that was provided through your email, etc. The next thing I do is I answer the rest of the emails that do require a response. But here is the trick. This is a very important tip. A very important habit that you will want to get into to ensure that you always answer your emails. And this is going to sound weird, but you need to get into the habit of checking your drafts daily. And the reason why is because every email you get that you do have to answer, you're going to start answering. So you start answering, and if you find that you have missing information, 
what I do is I put in brackets a note at the top saying what I'm missing, what I'm waiting for, so that I know what I need before I actually send the email. So I'll put that in brackets, I'll either find the info, or if I'm waiting for it, I'll move on to the next email. So I'll do this for all of the emails that need to be answered, and then you'll find that your email actually gets down to zero unread. And then if you've answered all of your emails in one day, you can go back to your drafts and see what info may have come in or you were able to obtain to answer the rest of the emails that are waiting in your drafts. And then once you have all the info, you just have to remember to remove your notes at the top and then go ahead and click send. Another tip I have to keep your emails under control is to create specific email addresses for specific purposes. So for me, as an accounting person, we receive estimates that we need to create invoices from. So we have one email address that has our name and billing. So everybody knows only one type of email goes to that email address because those are the emails that take us the longest to answer. Those are the ones that create the drafts. So whatever type of email you feel like you need to separate out. Like for everyone, you can have one email that's just for your bills and your bank info and your investments. Anything specific to you where you get a large number of emails or anything specific to you that requires you to take more time to respond, you can have an email address set up just for that. And then how you would name it, like let's say you set up an email just for your bills and your bank statements and investments, then you could name that with your name uh, banking, accounting, whatever you want to call it. So that way those important emails don't get lost in all of the mundane emails. Now I'm going to share some unconventional tips. So let's say you have like a massive amount of emails that you get every day. What I do to save time is I don't send thank yous and you're welcomes. And that might not work for everybody. But for me, because we all kind of know that we're super busy and we have so much to do, we don't mind it, we like just getting straight to the point and getting things done. But for like my personal business, which is like my website and ebooks and all that stuff, I am always sending extra thank yous and your welcomes and I love yous because I really appreciate my clients or my, my customers. But for my accounting side, we all know we're super busy, so the thank yous and the your welcomes aren't necessary. And so it all depends on the kind of relationship you have with the people you are emailing if you can get away with that. And for any emails that I must reference frequently, I will either flag them or star them depending on how your email is set up. And so it just makes it easy for me. Like let's say there's inst special instructions on how I, I need to do a task that I may do often, but not too frequently, not frequently enough for me to remember how to do every step. So I'll flag or star that email that has the reference info for me to be able to follow up on that later when I need it. Now here, is a tip I'm sure you have never heard of before. And this is something you can use in your personal email. You can do it in your work email too, but I especially do this for my personal email. So what I do is I have turned my own email into my own personal Google. So what I mean by that is, so let's say uh, on Google, you search for a recipe. You get tons and tons of recipes, but let's say you've tried five and you found your favorite one so instead of having to go to Google and search that recipe where hundreds of show up, you go, you save that recipe in your email and all you do is search the search box in your email for that specific recipe you already know you like. And so you're not saving files somewhere, you're not printing something, you're not writing something down that you could get lost somewhere in your house. You have it in your email and your email becomes its own search box, its own Google because you basically search that recipe in your email. It's really that simple. And all you have to do, you don't even have to create like specific folders for specific things. So let's say you save an article that you know that you wanna reference in the future, or you save some things you wanna maybe purchase in the future. You can just have a folder called resources and move everything to that folder because you're not even really gonna go in that folder to like scroll through. You're, base, you're literally gonna type in what you're searching for in the search box in your email address and find exactly what you're looking for because it's just, like I said, it's your personal Google. So don't forget to grab my free digital organizing challenge because though I've shared all these great tips in this video, you're not gonna really be able to use them well until you actually purge your email, which is what is included in the first week of my digital organizing challenge. So you just go to my freebie library, download it there, 
and it shows you what to do on the first five days. And then on the sixth day, you'll actually reference this video so that moving forward, your email stays organized from now on. And then the rest of the week go through how to organize your computer, your phone, and your photos and your videos. So stay tuned for my next video where I show you how to organize everything in your computer from your files to your folders to your desktop to your workflow and more. So be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell, give this video a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy organizing!